40 years old, I mean, this is a young man's game. And so you're coming in, and what when you went down to see at MEPS and everything to go and join the uh, the service, join the army, um, did you go option forty? I mean, you were like full on. I'm going all the way then. Yeah, yeah, I did, um, and I actually had to hold out for it um, because my thought was not knowing as much about the army as I do now that I wouldn't have that opportunity if I didn't get that contract. And, and my fear was that at my age, if I even if I made it to the army, which which was uncertain, that I wouldn't have the opportunity to try to get there. Um, and I've always thought, well, if you're, if you're going to try, try help. And then if it doesn't work out, you're just where you were anyway. So, right. Yeah, how did awesome. you, um, cause I didn't, I didn't know anything about Rangers, you know, how did you like lead, what led you into like an option 40 contract, like black Hawk down or uh, no, not so much, not, <clears throat> not so much, but I mean the, the Hollywood stuff is there, but Honestly, it was, again, reading newspapers and seeing who was doing what and kind of where and, and how things are going. And I had to educate myself. I didn't, I didn't really know about the Rangers. I, I was one of those people that still didn't know that there was no you know, unit of Ranger-tabbed dudes that are out there doing great things for the country. I, I wasn't sure the difference. I didn't know how it worked. <clears throat> Excuse me. But, uh, yeah, I, I just as I saw that, I started to delve a little bit more into what the options were. And, and like any civilian, you're like, well, Special Forces is really cool. But I didn't really want to do that. I wasn't sure. I didn't know what the thing was, the process, and whether I'd be able to. Um, and yeah, that was just looking at, the, at what I saw. That was the uh, the most potential attainable, but best job that I could get. I, I can't tell you how many people, um, and it's not a large number, but there are several individuals who are anywhere between the ages of, let's say, twenty seven and 32 that are just so concerned about going into the military at such a late age. And here you are, 40 years old, and like, yeah. Did you have your degree already? I, I had my associate degree, yeah. Where did you go to school at? I went to uh, Marshall University. That's right. Was that, that you, um, you know anything about their football team? A little bit, yeah, a little bit. But no, I was not, not on that football Oh, team. so we skipped that whole um, section there. Well, it was, it was a short period of time. And it was, <laughs> you know, we got hurt, and it was done, and that was that. So, so, but it was, it was a good experience. He became my hero at work because... Uh, Growing up around the tri-state area, uh, the Marshall Thundering Herd is like, you know, huge where I'm from. Yeah. And uh, my sister lived um, right there in, in the West Virginia, Ohio, like literally drive 10 minutes from the stadium. And uh, it, was the only, it was the only college football game I've ever been to. And um, whenever I met Mark or Brian, I was like, you know, we're talking and He's telling me about, you know, he's like, I, you know, I played little football or whatever. And I was like, hey, where did you play? And he said, you know, Marshall. And I was like, I love you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Instantly became my hero. That was good. <laughs> I mean, was it during the same time frame, too? Or uh, he, you were, it was a little bit ahead of what? Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he was a few years ahead. A few years, yeah. Or a few years on you. <laughs> he, he was in college in like 88. Yes. All right. So um, you go down, you join the option 40. Did you leave right away? Because you didn't really have anything holding you back other than just whenever the training date, right? No, I was, I was, I was dating my wife now at the time, um, and she was going through nursing school. And one of the things that, that I had an advantage of doing was saying that I pretty much could do when I, go when I wanted to go. I yeah. wanted to make sure I gave my work a couple months notice, all that fun stuff, and I wouldn't go. <clears throat> until she had graduated. <clears throat> yeah. So we made that decision that that way if something happened, she had that and she could go on. So we had no children, obviously, at the time. And, uh, yeah, so they wanted me to go earlier, and, and they said, you have to, and I said no. And I walked away, and they said, okay, you can go later. And, and so yeah. <laughs> I left in December. It was, it was actually funny because not, not knowing anything about the Army, they had me report to Fort Knox on December 29th. I, I didn't know about Exodus and holiday block leave or anything like that. So I was excited. Yeah. I get up there, and I'm ready to go. And I sat there in a holding area for about 12 days while they waited to come back. Or, sorry, about seven days when they came back, and then we actually started basics. So it was confusing, but it was good. So his job is that he's communications. Oh, yeah, we're just going to get into mm -hmm. that. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I was just getting ready to say Fort Knox. That's actually where I went mm -hmm. through uh, OSIT and everything at, and that was a long time ago as well. <laughs> but... Um, that was a home of the armor back then. It was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I, I guess I didn't realize it's still a basic training. No, it's not now. Yeah, we, we were the I think the first class of the last year they were doing basic training. Up oh, there, okay. In early 2010, um, at the time, and that was multiple MOS, you know, basic, and there we were. And it was yeah, nice cold and yeah, yeah, it was, <laughs> yeah. Definitely in December. I left there in September, so I went through the summer um, yeah, there. Yeah. 
brutal summers, just like it probably is brutal winters. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Um, when you left there, I guess you went to Gordon? Yeah, we went to, went to Fort Gordon, Augusta. Okay. Um, and, and did the, the training there to become, at the time, a 25 Charlie <clears throat> radio telephone operator. Um, so when you were in basic training, like, how was the, the, the privates and stuff with you? You were like, dude... How, yeah. how old are you? Like, what, how, that had to be like a different dynamic. Cause you're, you're like, like old enough to be their f- like, literally their fathers. Yeah, I ask, I ask where they're from sometimes when they ask me that question. Just to make sure, but the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the it, it really it, and, and I get that a lot, especially through through everything through Ranger School. How do they treat you through basic training? How how do your peers and how do your you know how do the the NCOs and, and whatnot how do they treat you? And honestly. As much of a disadvantage as it might be to be different um, in that way with age, it was just as much of an advantage because of the confusion that it can <laughs> cause from people, especially that, that you know are very used to managing a, a specific group of people. And when you fall outside of that group, I, I don't think that you're you know held differently. They're just not really sure how to handle you. So as long as you do what you're supposed to do, like it, you would do at any age, I don't, I don't think it's been any disadvantage. That's, yeah, that, and that's how super humbly is that you know. When, you can see by his sheer size when he walks in the room. Like I'm like, I want to stand up and rest for him. So, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> so I'm like, uh, you know, um, that, that's why I was wondering because you know, whether well, like this guy must be CID or something. Like who's here? Yeah, well, there was some of that. <laughs> you know, there was always always some of that, that question and, and and again a little confusion of why I would would be there. But I saw it more again from you know cadre than anything else. Like what do you what is it you're doing here? They, they again it wasn't. The peers, honestly, after a couple minutes and after you go through one or two things together, no one cares. Yeah, that's true. Brian, you're, you're obviously genetically blessed. I mean, uh, when I was your age, there's there's no way. I mean, I'm just a little bit ahead of you, but I mean, I did not look like that, and I sure as hell don't look like that now. I hell, I don't look like that now. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, it, it's fading fast, so let's not not get ahead of ourselves. It's not that I'm half broken and, and falling apart, and the wheels are coming. Well, that's out, because but, of the military. Yeah, yeah that just yeah, happens. Yeah. Well, he's half broken, but. He's got a, a, a hip issue, but he um, here I'm driving down the road a couple I don't know a couple months ago, and you know, he literally like has like a severe hip injury, and I see Mark's out there by himself with like a hundred pound sandbag on his shoulder, walking up and down that big ass hill, he's crushing it, and I saw him the next morning coming to the office, and I was like, dude. You can barely walk, and he's like, "Yeah, I just gotta keep doing it." Like, that. oh, well, you, you, try, you try resting it, and resting it doesn't work, then you might as well. He's you know, like, yeah, "It's gonna hurt if I do it anyway, so I might as well do it." Kind of, kind of <laughs> so you left Gordon and went to uh, Rip. Benning. Well, yeah. Benning for Airborne at the time we did, we did Airborne first, yeah, yeah and, then, and then Rasp and straight to Rasp. Oh, so you did the back when it was Airborne, then Rasp mm-hmm. as opposed to yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that just changed over in like 2017 when I was the air guide RT. Okay, it's only been a few years that they, or something they like did that. that because of all the people that would not go. That was their. You know, there's only X amount of option 40s, and then if you or get injured and stuff, yeah, they, uh, they would. You know, recruiters would tell them, you know, hey, just go, and if you don't want to go to do this, quit. So you lose a lot of contracts for people who who wanted to go. So I think that's why they switched it around. I think. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, I went to, went to RASP. Um, well, now wait. Now you show up for RASP. You get out of Airborne. You go over across the, the street there and everything. And uh, basically, <clears throat> then you show up and you're 40 years old. Now, who's your RASP country? Yeah. Ooh, back then, a um, uh, certain Israel I know was running, oh. running RASP at the time. Um, I'm trying to think of other ones. I know Sergeant Morrissey was there. Um, uh, Dave White was one of my cadre. It was out of Cole Range. And, and there's a lot of others that are a blur, honestly. But. Uh, yeah, some really got. I got the opportunity, obviously, like all of them do, to get trained by some really good dudes. Yeah. And I, I, I like pulled you out of the formation, had you stand up front and go, "If this dude doesn't quit, <laughs> I mean, or if seriously, you quit, this is the dude you got to see first. Yeah, or yeah, either or. Because <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it was actually kind of funny. They, they not not they did a little bit opposite. I, I cannot remember who who the sergeant was that was addressing us the first day we were up there, and we're all in formation and. Somehow he, he saw me, I think, through there, and he came over and he got right in my face, and he's like, "It's going to be very physically difficult for you to complete this course." <laughs> I was, you know, what do you, I'm like, Rod, Roger Sarden, and yeah, and that was that was it. They, they left me alone after. It's that. physically difficult for me to complete getting out of bed in the morning. So, <laughs> I got to. <laughs> I, give, I give him, I give him shit all day, every day about. about he's, uh, I was like, "How, how you doing this morning? You drink your drink, all you get? Yeah, <laughs> drink your drink. The, the same guy you were just talking about carrying a hundred pounds. Yeah, that's exactly right. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, I got to, you know, I got to make Mark Dell feel better because he's way better than me. <laughs> my, uh, I'll wake up and be half as good as Mark's anymore and I'll be a great guy. My, uh, my son told me the other night we were watching TV before I'm put into bed and one of those, you know, insurance commercials came on for <laughs> Colonial Life or whatever. And they, yeah. they listed the ages and he's like, dad, you can, you can get that insurance. <laughs> like, Thanks for pointing that out, son. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, all right. So you get through, uh, RASP, any, any challenges there that, uh, Oh, tons. I mean, I, I think it was like the I don't know, second week or whatever we were in RASP. And, uh, and at the time, my wife was pregnant with our first child. Um, it was a lot of, there was a lot of mental stuff going on, obviously, a lot of, a lot of things like that. And you, you wonder if you can and can't do it. And I think we were rebuilding the barracks outside, I think is what we were doing. We were like third floor where, you know, uniform changes, go get your beds, rebuild them out here, that kind of thing. Was I, I was, time. yeah, I was pretty close to, I, I fell down and I was like, my knee. And I thought it hurt because. Did you hit your life alert button? Yeah, that's what it was. What it was. Yeah, <laughs> that's, you just oh, bad God. man. God, so I love it. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be. Yeah. I can't get up. I, feel, oh, uh, I love you, Brian. You know that. Oh, I know. It's, I mean, I'm a step away from a Seattle's commercial. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So I was gonna be done, and they they basically, you know, I had one of those moments, one of those failure moments, and uh, they they pulled me up, and they were like, "No, you you can you can do this," which is a very rare thing. Yeah, um, that you're not hurt, and uh, so yeah, I went back in and. Did my stuff and that was it. But it was it was difficult. It was it wasn't as difficult. Like everything, it's not as difficult when you're done. Yeah. But at the time, you know, not experience something like that was uh, 